From Television City in Hollywood, the Jack Benny program with his special guest, Hal March. <laughs> Thank you, thank you very, very much, and welcome to the Lucky Strike program. Well, ladies and gentlemen, since I was with you last, I have really been around. A uh, couple of weeks ago, I went to New York, and I also appeared on the $64,000 question program. I, I won $64, and I quit. <laughs> I didn't try to reach any plateau. Yeah, I'm a comedian, not a mountain climber. <laughs> but then it was exciting, I must say. It was just wonderful. And then I got back here to California just in time to play my violin at Marlon Brando's wedding. <laughs> Lovely ceremony. I played Song of India. <laughs> Then I switch to when Irish eyes are smiling. <laughs> then I had an Italian number ready in case there were further developments. <laughs> then I spent all last week on, rehearsing I'm for my I'm rehearsing. Oh, well, certainly, I'm sure there are two seats right down front. Well, wait, wait a minute, wait, ladies, ladies, what's going on? He's talking to us. Jack Benny is actually talking to us. <laughs> yes, I, I haven't tingled like this since you put that brandy in my yogurt. <laughs> Look, ladies, I appreciate the fact that you, you know, that you came to see my show. I'm flattered, but uh, uh, couldn't you have come a little bit earlier so you could get seated? Oh, we had seats, but they were way in the back, and Emma wanted to get closer to you. Emma, <laughs> <laughs> what did you tell him? <laughs> well, look, uh, obviously there are no seats down in front, so go back. <laughs> well, that's a fine way to treat the president and secretary of the Jack Benny fan club. Come on, Clara. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> well, girls, uh, come here. <laughs> Come up here on the stage. I want to talk to you. <laughs> Come up here. Well, well, fan club. Are you the president and secretary of the Jack Benny fan club? Huh? Pasadena chapter. <laughs> and uh, how many, um, how many uh, members? Oh, we have 2,000, but uh, we may be thinning out, but like the buffalo, we're hanging on. <laughs> <laughs> and you have, um, you say you have 2,000 members. Huh? Yes, that's right. <laughs> and uh, uh, we meet locally every week. Mm -hmm. But for the last few years, we've been holding our uh, national conventions in uh, Minnesota. Well, why in Minnesota? Oh, we tried other places, but we find we get a better turnout when we're close to the Mayo Clinic. <laughs> well, girls. Uh, girls? <laughs> girls, as long as you want to be close, there are a couple of seats right in the wings there if you'd like to watch the show. Oh, uh, just one more thing, Mr. Benny. Yeah. I know that most of our members are watching now, and we had a terrible argument at our last meeting. Would you mind if I proved a point? Well, no, 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 of course not. <laughs> Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Oh, it's real, all right. 
It's thinning out, but like the buffalo, it's hanging up. <laughs> now, speaking of buffalo, Don Wilson... <laughs> My first program of the season came out here on the stage dressed in a calypso outfit and did a calypso song and dance. I let him do it a little while and I thought it was ridiculous. See, so I made him stop. And then, oddly enough, I got thousands of letters from fans saying that they thought he was the hit of the show. In fact, I had so many letters that I thought I'd let him come out again and try it. And here he is, Don Wilson. Don's, uh, Donzie, what about the Calypso? What happened here? Well, Jack, you know, you were right. Really, it was a little ridiculous for someone like me to come out here and do a Calypso number. And uh, So tonight, I'm going to do something a little more class. Class? Yes, I'm going to do Me and My Shadow. Oh, you mean the famous Ted Lewis number? Yeah, yeah, that's right, Jack. And then as much as I'm going to try to imitate Ted Lewis with all the little dance steps and everything, I'm going to need an assistant to be my shadow. Don, <laughs> the only thing that I could think of that would be your shadow would be Mount Whitney. <laughs> and I get to see you do a soft shoe. <laughs> well, Jack, don't worry about it. It's all taken care of. I'm going to be assisted by my son, Harlow. Harlow? Come on out, son. <laughs> all for <laughs> Now, look. Well, Harlow. Uh, Harlow, say hello to Mr. Benny. Hello, Mr. Benny. <laughs> now, Don, you know how I feel about your son. I mean, I think he's a, a well-fed, well-bred boy. <laughs> uh, you know, every time you want him to help you out, he always louses things up. He can't even remember the commercial. <laughs> well, don't worry about it this time, Jack. All he's going to do is dance. Oh, he's not going to speak. That's right. Oh, then, Harlow, you've given up the idea of being an announcer, huh? Yes, Mr. Benny. <laughs> Well, well, good, good. But he's still working in television. You are? Yes. They use my stomach for the Buffin commercial. <laughs> they use your stomach yes, for... I had to go to the hospital and everything. Oh, they took x-rays, huh? No, they put in a window. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you told me. I mean, on Christmas, I can send you curtains. <laughs> Think of something, you know? Right? Size 44. I'll remember. Now, Jack, if you just step over there just a little bit, Harlow and I'd like to give our impersonation of Ted Lewis. Well, this I have to see you. All right, Malin. Me. Sorry I said those things about you. You were
the curtains that I'm going to send him. It won't show. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as I mentioned before, a couple of weeks ago, I appeared as a contestant on the $64,000 program. Now, I answered Hal March. He asked me the first question. I answered it correctly, took the $64, and went home. Now, as far as I'm concerned, that should have been the end of it. But Hal March, he made such a big thing out of it that I sent him a wire, and I told him that I would personally put up the money, all the money, if he would be a guest on my program and answer a lot of questions. I want him as a contestant. <laughs> so he came all the way from New York, arrived here this morning, accepted my challenge. Here he is, Hal March. Even though you did say a lot of terrible things about me, I mean, like my being cheap, stingy, a quitter, I still want to welcome you to the Lucky Strike Show. Well, thanks, Jack. It's very nice. But in fairness to myself, those things weren't just my opinion, you know. As a matter of fact, my sponsor was so angry that he told me to tell you you could keep the $64, but please give back the free Revlon kit. <laughs> Terribly sorry. I, uh, you see, I, I haven't got the kit. I, I sent it to my sister in Chicago. Can't you get it back? Well, I guess so. I'll refund her money. <laughs> that figures. But Jack, even knowing your character, I, I still can't understand it. When you were on our show and had a chance to win all that money, why would you possibly stop at $64? Well, you can't understand oh. it. That's because you, all you do is ask the questions. That's why I wanted you here. Huh. <laughs> I want to show you how it feels when the shoe is on the other foot. <laughs> See how far you can go. All right, Jack, I'm willing to take a chance. And, uh... You are actually putting up your own money? Hal, if you answer the questions correctly, I personally will give you a check. $64,000. He turned a little white, but he said it. <laughs> okay, Jack, let's get going with the questions. Wait a minute, not so fast. We're going to do this thing right. Oh, what? Uh, There's the curtain, please. Now, Hal, I hope you appreciate what I'm doing for you. I'm not only giving you a, a chance to win a lot of money, but don't forget, I furnished your transportation all the way from New York. Furnished is the right word, Jack. I came out here with two beds and a dining room set and a Beacon's moving van. <laughs> At least you got here. That's the important thing. You know. Here. Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, shall we get on with the quiz? Let's go with the questions. Now, let's see. Um, your uh, category will be Greek mythology. <laughs> <laughs> if I can interrupt. Jack, I don't know anything about Greek mythology, Jack. Now, your first question. <laughs> is Mount... Please, Jack. Oh, getting yellow already. <laughs> I'm not getting yellow. I want to answer all the questions that you ask me, but at least show me the same courtesy that I show contestants in our show. Let me select my own category. Well, if you want to be technical about it, all right. Okay. There's the board right there. Oh, fine. Fine. Now, you can, uh, you can pick your own number. All right. Let's see. I, I think, yeah, I think that... Uh, I'll take number six, Jack. All right, number six. Greek mythology. <laughs> That's not fair, and you know it. Well, all right, then pick another number. No, no, no I'm not going to pick a number in that tricked-up board. Let's, uh, let's just take a chance on general knowledge. I'll oh, try that. General knowledge. Yeah. All right, and to show you that there is no trickery, all the questions are all sorted out and selected in my IBM machine. Oh, good, good. <laughs> Right. 
General Law. Good. Okay. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Your category, this first question is on Greek mythology. <laughs> Now, for $64, your question is, what is the name of the ancient Italian goddess of gardens and spring, identified by the Romans with Aphrodite as the goddess of love and beauty? Well, that's easy, Jack. That's Venus. <laughs> now, your first question... I already answered the first question. <laughs> All right, all right, you once... You, wait a minute, in the first place, you said you didn't want Greek mythology, so we're not counting. We are counting. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you won $60. $64. <laughs> 64, 64. Now, uh, would you care to go on for 128? Yes, I'd like to go ahead, Jack. Yes, All right, for the 128th question, we will go to the sealed envelope. Wait a minute. Wait, wait just a minute. <laughs> In our show, we don't go to the sealed envelopes to the $1,000 question. Look, at you run your show, I'll run mine. <laughs> Sure. And I want to personally guarantee that nobody's seen these questions. Not me, my buddies, not nobody except the guy with wrote And to make absolutely certain that the questions would remain a secret, the minute the guy finished writing them, we shot him. For $128. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready, Jack. <laughs> Jack. A question this long for only $128? The question is only the first line. The answer is the rest of it. <laughs> now, here's the thing for us. The coastline between Ocean Park and Malibu is the distance of 10 and a half miles. Right. Now, for $128, tell me, how many grains of sand are there on that beach? <laughs> High tide or low tide? <laughs> Excuse me a minute. When the fellow wrote this question, did he mean high tide or low tide? We'll never know. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, I forgot. Well, Hal, I'll have to give you that one on a technicality. I've got $128. 120 Now, Good. would you care to go for 256 Yeah, let's have the question. Let's Wait a minute, not so fast. We'll have to put you in the isolation booth. Jack, an isolation booth for $256? That's right. Bring out the booth. <laughs> going in there, Jack. Oh, afraid of your next question, eh? <laughs> Jack, there's a lion in there. Well, of course, the next question is on zoology. He's there to help you out. <laughs> Jack, I don't care what he's there for. I'm not going in with that beast. This is absolutely ridiculous. Well, all right, so there won't be any complaints later. Take that away and bring in the other boot. Oh, that's $256. It's on zoology. It's rather complicated, so listen carefully. Here we go. The science of zoology is divided into many branches, and many men have achieved fame in these fields. 
Name the founder and the prime contributions of each of the following eight branches of zoology. Morphology, embryology, thrematology, paleozoology, phylogeny, taxonomy, ecology, and zoogeography. <laughs> Lion back in here with me, Jeff. <laughs> it's too late. Now, Hal, this is a little difficult, so don't cheat yourself. Concentrate for the full time allotted you. You're wondering where we got that lion. You see? He escaped from the Mike Todd party. <laughs> he didn't escape, he just left early. <laughs> and now I'd like to bring out my guest again. He's a real good sport, Hal March. I've never had a rougher time in my life. Yeah, that isolation booth was pretty rough, wasn't it? It wasn't the booth, it was that car, Jack. Oh. <laughs> uh, well, you don't have to ride it anymore. Hmm? You mean I don't get to keep it? No. Oh, I feel better already. Well, of course. <laughs> well, Hal, it's a shame that I made you come all the way over here and then you didn't win it. Well, that's all right, Jack. I was coming out anyway to discuss some business with Paramount about the picture that I did for them this summer at the movie. Oh, oh, that's right. You did make a movie. What's the name of it? Yeah, well, it's a wonderful comedy, Jack, called Hear Me Good. It's a lot of girls and laughs, if you like that sort of thing. Yeah, <laughs> well, isn't that nice? I think so. You know, what uh, amazes me, here you are, a fella, you have, uh, uh, you made a picture, you have two television shows. I, I made a record, too. We're singing for a dot record called Hear Me Good. Very, very good. <laughs> You did a, you made a picture, two television shows, and a record. I'm conducting an album. The oh, album. shut up. <laughs> you know, well, Hal, let me ask you, doing all these things, like, how old are you? I'm 37, Jack. 37? Mm -hmm. then you were born in 1896. <laughs> Jack, if I'm, if I'm 37, how could I have been born in 1896? You must have been. I'm 39. I was born in 1894. <laughs> you were born in 1894. How can you possibly... Because this is my show! <laughs> Your show has been a lot of fun, yeah. and again, I'd like to thank you very sincerely for furnishing my transportation. Uh -huh. I'm going back in a dining room set. <laughs> That's it. Take care of those ulcers, won't you? I don't have any ulcers, Jack. You mean you give out all this money and you haven't got ulcers? <laughs> My sponsor has a case. Oh, I, I see, I see. <laughs>